Hello and welcome to BOI Weekly. I'm Kaya Dialayandi. One of the most critical factors anyone who wants to invest in a country would consider before taking the plunge is how easy or otherwise it is to do business there. Before now, Nigeria wasn't exactly attractive in that regard, and the reasons are complicated. When the current administration assumed office, it quickly realized that a key component of its economic recovery and growth plan would be to improve the ease of doing business in Nigeria. So in July of 2016, President Muhammadu Buhari set up the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC. The mandate of the council was to remove the bureaucratic bottlenecks to doing business in Nigeria, a move expected to progressively make the country an easier place to start and grow businesses. Chaired by the Vice President, Professor Yemio Shimbajo, members of PEBEC include 10 honorable ministers of the Federation whose portfolios directly impact the business environment. Others are the Governor of Central Bank, head of civil service as well as representatives of the National Assembly and the private sector. The council has since gone to work carefully and collaboratively unbundling the delicate complications and the results are beginning to show. A few days back, I sat down with a senior special assistant to the president on industry, trade and investment, Dr. Jumoke Oduwale, who also serves as the executive secretary of PEBEC. She shares with me some of the remarkable achievements of the council and how much easier it has become to do business in Nigeria. Stay close. Starting your business shouldn't be a scare when you have the right support. Support that helps you grow. Support that helps you expand beyond borders. And this support extends to every single person on the value chain. All the way down to the leaders of the next generation. At Bank of Industry, we believe that supporting one is supporting all the system set up to provide financial and advisory support for growing and large businesses. Visit any of our offices, website or social media pages to get in on how you can benefit from this today. Bank of Industry, transforming Nigeria's industrial sector. Dr. Oduwale, thank you for joining us on BOI Weekly. It's a pleasure. Can you help us understand what PEBEC is all about. PEBEC is a reform initiative of the federal government. When this administration came into power, the business climate was really not uh, optimal. So Nigeria was considered a very difficult place in which to do business. So we went on um, finding out how other economies have reformed their business climates. So working from the office of the vice president, from the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, what we figured out was that you need a lot of political will, you need uh, collaboration across the board, and then you need to institutionalize a number of the reforms that you work on. So PEBEC was set up in July of 2016, and it's a collaborative effort chaired by the Vice President. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment is the Vice Chair. You have about 10 other ministers, CBN Governor, Head of Civil Service, you have representation from the National Assembly, uh, from state governments, Lagos and Kano, from the private sector. So you have issues that cut across, say for instance, power, finance, transport, all the ministers that really should be in the room to avoid government working in silos. Because what it is, it's not that people don't work, but when you work in silos, the effort is dissipated. But when you have a targeted intervention, then you can really harness the optimal uh, results. What's the justification for PEBEC? Since statutorily we have institutions who, who would solve those problems that PEBEC seeks to solve. So what it is, when you're trying to fix a business climate, most of the issues are cross-cutting. So you have Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment trying to solve uh, challenges that cut across 
Ministry of Interior, like immigration challenges. You have ports challenges, that's Ministry of Transport. You have uh, visa challenges, um, you know, again, interior. There are a number of things that cut across a number of government agencies, ministries, and departments. So to have a targeted intervention to really have impactful delivery, you need to bring everybody together with enough political will convening power. And that's where the presidency comes in. To let everybody realize that you have to work together. There's no time for tough wars. We have a common objective. We're solving issues together. So for instance, we work on areas like, um, for instance, trading across borders. It has to do with the seaports. You work with Nigerian Customs Service, Ministry of Finance, the Central Bank, the Shippers Councils, the Nigerian Ports Authority, um, NDLE, you know, a number of agencies, uh, ministries, departments, all with their own legislations. You have SUN, you have NAFDAQ. The fact that there's multiplicity, uh, complexity, you need that political will to bring clarity and uh, cohesiveness into the initiative. And that's what PEVEC does. Can you outline some of the achievements or the impacts that PEVEC has achieved since inception? Wow, we've been at it about 24 months now and quite a lot has happened. I think one of the easiest that comes to mind is the starting a business. Uh, in 2015, we had so many manual forms. There were no really online procedures. Now you can register a business name. You can register your company online, really. You can reserve a business name. You can get your TIN number. Uh, all the forms, six of them were harmonized into one form, which is online. So that's an example, working with the uh, Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, and FIRS for the TIN number and Joint Tax Board. So that's one level of collaboration. In areas like the airport experience, entry and exit of people, we worked with Foreign Affairs and with Immigration and Ministry of Interior to streamline the processes of visas in Nigerian missions abroad, to implement the 48-hour timeline and to make sure that even in the country, the visa on arrival, which is really an electronic visa, that you apply for 48 hours ahead, it's streamlined. When you go through the airport, before you had a lot of different checkpoints, or well, I call them checkpoints, a lot of different interfaces with various agencies, and the executive order one, which underpins um, some of our national action plan outcomes, make sure that agencies are working in a coordinated manner, the single interface. We do a lot of layering of technology, automation, uh, to simplify procedures. Also to ensure that there's a lot of transparency. All the PEBEC MBAs have to have websites with updated information. So this is the systemic intervention that PEBEC brings to bear for small and medium-sized enterprises. There is a cycle of policy somersault in the country, uh, where when administration comes in, uh, things in a particular way about a particular problem and then it achieves its own results but we see that uh, it's usually not carried on by successive administrations. What legal framework is put in place to protect what PEBEC is doing? Yeah. So we've had a couple of legislative interventions. Uh, we've worked very closely with the National Assembly. I told you there's very high level representation. Senator Nala is a member of the PEBEC representing the National Assembly. Last year, the National Assembly partnered with PEBEC to pass two legislations on access to credit. Um, National Collateral Registry, there was an act that was signed into law about May last year and also one for credit bureaus. And these two interventions gave a very robust legal framework for access to credit in the country. We actually ranked number six in the world because of that intervention. You're absolutely correct that when you layer legislation on procedures, then you have a very sustainable regime. So this year, we worked again very closely with the National Assembly, and the Senate has passed, uh, repealed, and reenacted the CAMA. And the House of Reps is, is poised to pass it as well. And of course, working with the presidency, it will get signed and gazetted. We've had a bit of complications in, in the way we do things in Nigeria, and that has aided corruption. How has your work been able to 
uh, reduce that complication so that we reduce corruption? And what challenges have you faced in, in that regard? One of the cornerstones of the entire initiative is transparency. We believe that when you have a transparent process, the opportunities for corruption, for rent-seeking behaviors are drastically reduced. So one of the first things we did was to ask every agency to have a website and to have display of current information at their premises. You give the actual types of documentation required, the list of documentation, so nobody is saying, oh, you don't have this fifth document, come back. Because every sort of opaqueness with the, with the documentation required is always, people are then encouraged to sort of incentivize, you know, incentivize and move on. So that transparency of cost also, when you know what something costs, you know who's responsible. So transparency is, is one big thing that we've really been pushing across all the MDAs, and we work with about 40 of them. Another thing that we've been pushing is the use of automation. So when you automate processes, they're much more difficult to manipulate. Manual procedures have a lot of leakages, they can be tampered with, but when a, when a form is filled online and submitted online, then it's clear what time it was submitted, it's clear what was submitted, um, when the response time is due, nobody can tell you they didn't find your file, or, you know, those kinds of things. So those are really a lot of things that SMEs can do without. So that transparency is a very important component of the entire initiative.